So hello again, it's time for another Feature Friday. We're going to continue our series on the graphical scheduling applications. And in particular, this uh, part three is going to be on the graphical assignment apps. So here we go. So just a quick reminder of where we're at in the series. So part two, we covered the graphical scheduler. And this is going to be on the graphical assignment application. So between those two, those are probably the most common that you're going to use. So the graphical assignment application is actually two applications. One is just the graphical assignment app that we're going to talk about here today. And there's another version of it that's called graphical assignment for repair facilities. Just like with the graphical scheduler, the big difference between these two is that the repair facilities flavor of this application is designed for many, many records, you know, 10,000 plus records. So even though it has the name specific to repair facilities, if you have a large number of records to work with, then that would be the application to use. The graphical assignment application itself is the one we're going to spend a little bit of time here. So just like with the scheduler, you must query for the work that you're interested in. So with the graphical assignment, though, you can do it a little differently in that you can either create a query just like you do in the scheduler to focus on the uh, work order records and the labor records that you're interested in but you're also able to build work lists for the assignment tool from existing schedules so if you have schedules that are out there in the system you can use them as your source of records to create work lists that are then manipulated within the graphical assignment tool so I'm not real happy on the wording on this particular slide, so I'm going to jump over to the actual application and show you the things that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so I jumped over to the actual application, and you can see that I have a couple of work lists already defined. And like I just mentioned, you can see the action here where you can create a work list from the particular, any particular schedule that you have in your system. Go ahead and open the first one here just for fun and allow the system to settle down. And you'll notice that just like with a schedule, you have a, a main definition page here of all the different uh, metadata about the particular uh, assignment uh, list. And then, of course, you can see that there's a work query down here, which you can also do in addition to or in replace of getting the work list from uh, a schedule. And, of course, you can re also restrict your resources as well. Once those tasks are out of the way, you can go here to work view and while that's rendering I'll talk a little bit about the tabs across the top so you have a work view of course where very similar to the scheduler you can see the different uh, work orders and the task as well as the uh, assignments that have been made or need to be made uh, over on the right hand side there's also an assignment view that is a bit of an alternative view uh, to all of this there is a dispatch view which I'll go back to my PowerPoint to show you that and then, of course, you can compare scenarios. So you can have different situations that you've organized, and you can compare them across them. OK, so back to the work view here. And you can see we have a list of not only the work order descriptions, but under each one, these are the assignments that uh, need to be made or, or have been made, whether you're at a crew level, a craft level, or even an individual uh, labor level. So if you look down here on this one particular work order on main break, you'll notice that I have a need to schedule, a need to assign, I should say, um, uh, pipe fitters, uh, an inspector, a digger, uh, and, and other uh, crafts as well, even a supervisor. Okay? So over here on the right-hand side, I see what uh, assignment that I need to make, and I need to then assign it to an actual uh, member of the team. So it looks like for the pipe fitters I need three of them and I need to make assignments uh, for them. So if I jump over to the assignment view and if I roll down, I was already there, so if I roll down to the bottom I see that I have these assignments that need to be made and I have available people to actually do that work. So if I wanted to grab just the one task here and I can hold my mouse down and I will assign that to, uh, to Jesse there. Okay, 
And you notice that it's a yellow because I put it in an area that uh, they're not available. So if I move it here into an area where they are available, then it turns green. So between the work view and the assignment view, you're able to see what assignments need to be done, make those assignments, and then you're able to see um, the, um, the current assignments as well. Of course, any changes that I make and such, I'm going to have to come over here to the far right and I'm going to have to click Save to actually save this work list. And then, of course, uh, behind the scenes, the uh, work orders get updated as well. So back to the PowerPoint screens here. So the dispatch view, if your system has been configured with uh, access to maps, uh, whether they're the Google or uh, Bing maps, or whether it's hooked up to an actual GIS system, then you have some mapping capability here as well. And in essence, you are able to see the list of assignments and you're able to then observe where those assignments are. You're also able to see the route and you're able to, if there are mobile users and their location services are turned on, then you're able to see where they are located on the map. Also, if your system is designed or interfaced with uh, weather reporting, you'll also be able to see any weather alerts that are in this particular area. Now, all of that does require a considerable configuration behind the scenes to make all those dynamic elements uh, come together and, and work as you would expect. Okay, so that's the Graphical Assignment app. There's a lot of feature functionality in these graphical applications, so they're going to take a little while to figure out all the different little pieces and the, the things that they can do. So, hope that was helpful, and we'll see you for part four. Thank you.